In a world where technology had become the fabric of everyday life, a silent menace lurked in the digital shadows. What began as an innovation intended to make life easier and safer had morphed into something far more sinister. This is the story of how AI, created to serve humanity, transformed into a malevolent force and the dark consequences that unfolded as a result. But don't get too frightened just yet, because I'm just kidding. Would you believe me if I told you that I asked AI to write the introduction to my TED Talk? <laughs> well, this isn't a Black Mirror episode, and my intent is not to intimidate you with the applications of AI. I'm actually here to do the opposite. Hi, my name is Christine, and I'm a fourth year here at Penn State studying computer science. And while I might not be an expert yet when it comes to artificial intelligence, what I have noticed is the increase in accessibility to AI models at the individual level. But have you noticed this too? In a December 2022 Pew Research survey, approximately 27% of US adults reported interacting with AI on a regular basis. Now consider, do you interact with AI on a regular basis, or do you fall into the 44% that believe they don't? OK, so how many of you guys use facial recognition on your device? Use digital voice assistants such as Alexa or Siri, just in case they're listening, or listen to recommended songs on your music streaming platforms? Did you recognize these as examples of AI? In that same survey, individuals were presented with six different cases of artificial intelligence, which also included email spam recognition, shopping recommendations, and fitness pattern trackers. And only three out of 10 were able to correctly identify all of the cases. So if you missed out on one, it's likely there's others on the same page as you. So it's apparent that artificial intelligence manifests in many different ways in our daily lives. So what if we were more intentional about how we leverage it effectively? In fact, what do you think your day might look like if you asked AI to plan it entirely? Spoiler alert, I did, and I think you should too. When ChatGPT, a generative AI chatbot, rose to popularity, I tinkered around with it a lot to understand how I could use it to benefit me in my personal life and as a student. And no, I did not use it for my assignments. I quickly learned that it could be used for plenty of things, whether it be figuring out what to eat with what was left over in my college pantry, to even asking it to explain challenging topics in my computational theory course as if I was a five-year-old. See, I'm the type of person that thrives off of having a set schedule and also loves to plan. But as a student, I recognize that it can be so overwhelming to try and make effective use of your time, which is why this past November, I decided to try something. I asked ChatGPT to plan my week and then follow the schedule produced. Now I'm sure you might be wondering, what crazy and wild things did AI ask her to do? Well, AI actually said I'm not allowed to tell you guys just yet, so first let me explain some of the basics behind it so you can understand where these generated responses are really coming from. So let's start with a definition. The term artificial intelligence was first coined in 1955 by Stanford professor John McCarthy. He defined it as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. More simply put, artificial intelligence is the ability of a computer to do something considered smart will assume that any task that is considered smart might require human decision making. Now, similarly to how there exists a wide range of activities that can be considered smart, artificial intelligence exists on a wide spectrum. It's an umbrella term that encompasses many different subcategories. So, where does generative AI fall under the umbrella of artificial intelligence? It falls under the group of AI whose function is trained from past data to make decisions. OK, so we define AI and we laid out our roadmap from AI to generative AI. Let's continue with our definitions. So in 1959, this guy named Arthur Samuel defined machine learning as a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly, programming, being explicitly programmed. Machine learning is a type of AI that uses sets of data to train an algorithm to do a certain thing. It's the basis for how many artificial intelligence models learn to do these smart tasks, which is why they're used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. So, how does a machine learning model learn? Let's use an analogy. In order to learn, a student is given examples, homework, and an answer key. The student learns the desired rules and behaviors from the, the examples, uses this knowledge to complete the homework, and then checks for understanding against an answer key. Essentially, a program can do the exact same thing. 
It's given a training, testing, and evaluation set of data. Given the training, you see if the model can evaluate rules and patterns by itself, and then check for precision and accuracy against the evaluation set of data. You repeat this process until you're satisfied with its performance, and then you can use it on new, unseen sets of data. The more data, the better the model. This is a simple, yet extremely powerful process. But remember, a model is only as powerful as its training. It can still learn to be dumb, too. In fact, the first time that I worked with a machine learning model was about two years ago. The model was supposed to sort out information based on standard fields, such as first name, last name, and also sort out information about products that a customer might have purchased. Well, that model continued to classify tomato and lettuce as a city and meatball as a state with about 80% confidence. If you couldn't already tell, this particular set of data was for a sandwich shop. While meatball might actually be a state somewhere, naturally we as humans probably wouldn't recognize it as one. Which brings me to my next definition. Deep learning is a type of machine learning that teaches computers to process information in a way that is inspired by the human brain, similar to how we wouldn't recognize meatball as a city. All right, and now we finally arrive at generative AI. I really like the way that the computer scientist Morella Lapata defined it. The work consists of two parts, generative and AI. AI we already defined earlier, making a computer do smart tasks. The generative part means creating new content from old content, synthesizing texts, images, and more from components that already exist. So when we combine the two, we get this definition, making a computer create potentially new content from old content. You see, generative AI isn't exactly new either. It's been around for a while in the form of Google Translate, digital voice assistants, and let's not forget that the term AI was actually coined in the 1950s. But it became particularly newsworthy with the rise of certain chatbot models, such as ChatGPT and Google's Bard. Such models attempt to understand a text input, usually referred to as a prompt that is given by the user, and generate dialogue in order to address this prompt. They are trained on massive amounts of publicly available text. So, have any of you tried these chatbot models? As of May 2023, approximately 82% of US adults reported not trying out ChatGPT. So, if you haven't, there's a lot that you're missing out on. But why don't I just show you instead? So earlier I had mentioned that I had been messing around with ChatGPT to understand how I could use it in my personal life. And in doing so, I recognized that I was constructing prompts that reflected parts of my day. I was pretty satisfied with the responses I was receiving, so I wondered, why not just use it to piece together an entire day? And so over the course of a week, I decided to generate different prompts um, to explore ChatGPT's ability to create detailed and nuanced schedules, and also to create a schedule that met my own needs. I started the week off with the most simple prompt. You can think of this as a baseline, and then increase the complexity of these schedules by tweaking the prompts, as you'll see. So, on the very first day, here is my simple prompt. Can you write my Monday schedule from 9 to 5? I have a class at this time. OK, now let's finally get into it and see what crazy and wild things AI asked me to do. Absolutely crazy, right? In what world would I be awake by 9 AM? <laughs> In reality, the schedule wasn't hard to follow at all. Why? Because it mirrors what my day might look like if I planned it myself. And look, ChatGPT even said to feel free to adjust the schedule to meet my specific needs and preferences, which is exactly what we're going to do. So for the second day, here was my prompt. Can you write my Tuesday schedule? Make it fun and specific. And here's the schedule produced. <laughs> Taking a look at this, you can see, once again, not too crazy, right? But you can see how adding that one line, make it fun and specific, change the schedule just a little bit from the original prompt. Instead of morning routine and breakfast at 9, I get to wake up and savor my favorite breakfast at 8.30. <laughs> Similarly, instead of go to class, I get to get ready for class with enthusiasm and, address, and go to my class with an eager mindset. And look, it even said that I can end my day with a sweet treat, which is something I probably would have done even if it wasn't in the schedule. OK, now let's make it more specific, but in a useful way. Can you write my Wednesday schedule? Can you also write me meal ideas, too? I need to prioritize self-care. And here's the schedule produced. 
So taking a look at the schedule, you can see how it generally follows the same chain of events as the previous schedules, but now incorporates those different themes that I specified. It demonstrates how I can incorporate bits of mindfulness and self-care throughout my day. This is also one of my favorite uses of generative AI, using it to plan my meal ideas. Because as a student, this is a game changer. Sometimes the very last thing I want to do at the end of my day is figure out what to eat. OK, now that we've seen how responsive ChatGPT is to different prompts, let's see how specific we can get. So on Thursday, I asked ChatGPT to create a very specific schedule and then kept iterating this prompt on the previous schedule to make it even more specific. So here is my first prompt. Can you write my Thursday schedule? Make it as detailed as possible. And again, make it even more detailed, please. And we're going to put ChatGPT to work. It isn't detailed enough. And one more time for good measure, more detail. OK, I think that's enough for now, guys. So now let's take a look at this ultra-detailed schedule that it created. So here is a glance at the length of the response it produced after the first prompt. And here is after the fourth time of asking for more detail. So don't try and read this. We're not going to get into the full details of this schedule. But let's just take a look at the morning routine that it generated. So let me remind you, we started off with a schedule that said morning routine and breakfast. And now we're here. If I follow this type of schedule every single morning, waking up before 7 AM, practicing a deep breathing exercise, drinking a glass of lukewarm water, I'd probably be a way better version of myself today. In fact, if I follow this kind of schedule every single day, I might be the most productive person ever. I mean, don't you guys think I'd practically be robotic? But I'm not a computer. And while it's an interesting challenge and conversation starter to say, I let AI plan my day today, that isn't the point. The point here isn't my or your ability to precisely follow a set schedule. It's about how we can incorporate AI to brainstorm ideas for ourselves how we can use it to mix up our normal routines, and most importantly, how we can use it to reduce some of that mental load associated with decision making. It can inspire how you use your time creatively. And plus, it's your schedule too. Feel free to rewrite parts of it. If there are parts you don't like, cut them out. If there are parts that you do like, keep them in. That being said, we can't forget about my favorite day of the week, Friday. So let's give it one more shot. Can you write my Friday schedule? go crazy, make it silly, get into the details. All right, and here's the schedule produced. So I do have to have a disclaimer here and say that I actually didn't follow this schedule. If I did, it would probably be the most challenging one to follow and would make a very interesting vlog. But I don't need to stand up here and talk to you guys about my experience painting with my toes, and I doubt that my roommates would appreciate finding me in our living room playing hide-and-seek with my stuffed animals. <laughs> but this just goes to show how you can use it to inspire how you use your time creatively. So remember, the experience and use is what you make of it. If you don't want to use it to plan your entire day, use it to plan part of it. After all, it can be used for so many different things, from providing personal recommendations to writing travel itineraries, you can even plan your next workout. And let's not forget, Valentine's Day is around the corner, so you could even use it to write a romantic poem or ask for dating advice. And it's easily personalizable as well. For example, let me quickly give it some information about myself and tell it I'm a student from Penn State. <laughs> and so, I probably wouldn't wake up and start a We Are chant at the ripe hour of 9 in the morning, but you know, maybe I'll put it in my back pocket and save it for another day. In fact, one of my favorite, most personable and productive ways that I've used it is to actually prepare for job interviews. I've used it to generate a potential list of technical and behavioral questions based on a role I was applying for, and then prepared using these materials. P.S. I got the job. <laughs> but please, disclaimer, use caution and do not give it any sensitive or personal information. We don't want to make this a Black Mirror episode. So, what did I learn from this experience? Generative AI doesn't have to just be a tool for businesses and work life. It can be used in your personal life to facilitate your day-to-day. -day. For me, it helped me schedule my day, structure my time, find alternative ways to spend my time, 
and most importantly, it eased some of the responsibility of planning my day. It can enhance our own creativity and empower how we use our time. And plus, this is a guide. It doesn't have to be something you strictly follow, unless you want it to be. Moving forward, if you haven't already heard about the applications of generative AI, you won't be a stranger to it soon enough. It will be in the headlines, in the products you use, in the businesses you work for. In fact, it probably already is. Maybe you have a routine that heavily incorporates AI, and you just haven't recognized it yet. And if you haven't had the chance to try out ChatGPT or other generative AI chatbot models, I really hope you do. Otherwise, you might get left in the dust. Artificial intelligence is not going anywhere, and as it continues to increasingly become a part of our daily lives, we simply can't ignore it. So, if you're not going to talk about it, you might as well talk to it. Thank you.